Well, that was uh, around there for Orby Harrison on my book. Orby said, incidentally, that he finished this in the seventh round. Well, that's coming up. Let's hear what they're saying in the Harrison corner. Tell Torrance, the trainer. You're going to have to pick it up a little bit. You've got, to pick, you've got to pick it up. You're boxing. You're boxing. You move on our side. All he's doing is walk around rest. I want you to step to him with his jab. I want you to pick it up a little bit. Make him attack. Feign him. Get off your back heel. Get inside. Make him back and take those shots inside. This is something he's thinking about underneath. Then he comes quite close to it. Jim McDonnell and Dean Powell close. having the words of advice there. You let there. me nick it off you, them silly little punches. Yeah, he's nicking it he's away from you, all right? Keep the round away now, Tim. Keep close. Come on. Keep close. Just have a good round. He's trying to pull it back. Pull his right back. Pull him right back. Still keep the defense. Pull him. I gave that round to Harrison Duke, and that gives him, on my card anyway, just edging the fight. Yep, I've got him one round up. I think Daniel Lynch just gave the round away there, was just content to follow him round. He's just got to jump on all the Harrison and really get to work. He's got a mean business. You know, we want to know if all the Harrison can fight. And we know Danny Williams can fight because he done it against Mike Tyson. But we've seen, we've seen the Jacqueline Hyde in Danny Williams. Has he got the speed and the desire? Has he got the sheer devilment in there? Sometimes he just seems too nice to be a prize fighter. I'd like to see Williams just bury that jab just a little bit. No, still head hunting. Oh, I just missed with that left hook. And that is the punch for the south for the left right, hook. Stop Harrison just slips right. inside it, saw it coming. Stop it. Done a good job on that injured left eye. Words from Dave Paris for holding. Orby Harrison doesn't like it. But he is the man in the ring who is in charge. And Dave Paris is starting to get a little bit irritated by some of Harrison's tactics. Well, if you see him, you know, thinking to yourself, if he does it again, perhaps maybe deduct a point. Could come to that. He's been warned repeatedly. A few chants of Danny, a few slow hand claps, body shots from Williams, and the right hand to the head. Well, you know, the general consensus is that or was, I should say, that Harrison would, would completely outbox Danny Williams. But Williams isn't, isn't really allowing him to do that. Harrison's edging this one simply because Williams is just not doing enough. He's got to get into range, as his corner was saying like that. He can't just stand there. He's got to gamble and he's got to throw punches. And it just ain't coming. Well, Williams needs to step to his left, throw the right hand, step back and throw the left hook. That'd be a, he needs to try a variation of combinations. His corner, I think, was saying, concentrate on defence, don't forget your defence, but he's got, he's, got a, he's got a gamble, surely. Yeah, he, he does have to gamble. Again, he's just he's, he's given this round away. I'm hoping his concentration isn't start to waver because we've seen Danny Williams be three or four rounds up in a fight before and then just switch off in the middle of the fight and then end up losing. Well, Harrison, in many ways, is the man who, I suppose in boxing terms, would be the more marketable man for the world heavyweight title, the Olympic champions. Tag does still have a cachet, but here comes Williams again. And heads came dangerously close there when Williams started that, that onslaught of punches. But has he done enough with that little flurry, those meaty-looking body shots? Has that done enough? to negate the minutes, couple of minutes, maybe more, in which Harrison's just been able to stand at range and jab his jab away with that right-hand lead. Nobody likes being hit, obviously, but, you know, Audley Harrison has just got a very, very, very sort of timid look on his face. Every time the shots come his way, you know, he starts blinking, as I said, and it just all goes a little bit pear-shaped. Well, we've still got Harrison edging this one. Let's see how Barry McGuigan's reading it. Barry. Uh, I don't agree with that, uh, John. I, ha I have Williams ahead, uh, only by one round, but uh, Audley is fighting like he's petrified. He's uh, running ar around the ring. He's not even using his jab, so he certainly has not shown that he's the real deal tonight. Um, he's fighting very negatively. He doesn't want to fight on the inside. He grabs him, but Williams is too leaden in the legs to actually get close to him. He's not jabbing enough. He should be jabbing him back to the ropes as soon as his back hits the ropes, letting those combinations go instead of allowing Audley to grab him. But uh, Williams has uh, certainly got to put his foot on the gas. He's beginning to tire now. And are we going to see uh, something real from Audley Harrison? Because up to now, we've seen nothing. We go now towards the eighth round. 
Harrison's stamina, of course, is being called into question here. He's going to have to dig deep, as is Danny Williams. Could it be going to the judges' cards, I wonder? Well, I think both boxers really are guilty of not really imposing their will on this fight this far. Been a pretty much safety first campaign for Mortley Harrison. Would be fascinating to know just how the judges have it. You heard Barry McGuigan saying there that you've got Williams by a round. We've got Harrison just edging it. Who's going to have the bragging rights at the end of this one? Harrison just patting Williams with that right hand. There's nothing in that. Well, here's the thing. I mean, if, if Harrison can touch him with the jab, then he can land a straight left. So he should be firing one-twos. But every time Danny Williams starts to throw his punches back, this is what you get. Harrison just covers up, smothers him, takes him back to the ropes and waits for the referee to intervene. So what does Williams do then? If he's, if he's being frustrated to that extent, how does he turn this one around now? Sure, he's just got to throw the proverbial kitchen sink at him. Absolutely, he needs to, needs to throw caution to the wind, you know, needs to really inject some urgency into them punches and push all the Harrison back, physically push him back, where he can hammer him against the ropes. Going even more, even more impatient because of the, the lack of work. They want to see more than this. Harrison said that this was the night that he would stand up and be counted. After this, he said, "You will know that I'm for real. It is my destiny to be the world heavyweight champion. Not on this showing, he's not." Good jab from Williams, and again, as soon as he tries to follow up with the right hook, Harrison just grabs and gnaws and holds on, and that's precisely what Jim McDonnell was suggesting might happen beforehand. Williams, the trainer, he says that Harrison does that to buy time because he just can't fight for three minutes of a round. Well, that's probably, probably, would be probably about right. I mean, but it's a good spoiling tactic if you know what you're doing when you're in the ring. The jeers continue again. Seems a long time ago since we saw the fireworks of Amir Khan. Jab from Williams. He did get through that time. Now the crowd is shouting, what a load of rubbish. They're not happy at all. And that spurred Williams into action. If, if Williams lands here, if he lands flush, I really do think that Harrison has well the question is i suppose has he got the chin remember this is the guy who was wobbled by mark prince the chesterfield butcher well right right now we're not going to find that out because he's doing a pretty good job of making williams miss williams just isn't throwing enough punches is he no just no way harrison pawing and spoiling and fainting and another it has to be said dull round is over did Harrison win that one I give it to Williams I give the round to Williams you know he, he was the aggressor at least he was trying to make the fight he was pushing all the Harrison back you know continually throughout the round so you got it pretty much level maybe Williams even just edging it now I've got Williams one round up well, how are the judges going to be scoring it that is the million dollar question what are they going to be saying you've got to keep Williams imposing and let the shots go. When you get into that point sinking, that's what's winning really at the moment. You got but don't let the boxing match with him. You've got to bang his body, and then you've got to bring him up over the top. Kill the body, and then bring him up over the top. There's Amir Khan, interested spectator at ringside with his father, Shah. The judges, incidentally, Philip Edwards, Mark Green, Terry O'Connor, all of them star-class referees in this country. Into the ninth round, scheduled to go 12, just four remaining. Well, this is anybody's fight, it really is. I mean, it hasn't been fought at a terribly hard pace. We just figure the first one now to really stamp the authority can probably run to a, a pretty pretty clear points victory. I mean, either of these boxers should be able to do the last four rounds in their sleep. Must confess to being old enough to remember Joe Bugner on many occasions. And he used to frustrate because he had all the physical attributes that somehow when the big when the big moment came didn't quite deliver didn't quite lay himself on the line but having said that I'll tell you what on this showing joe bugger would have beaten Aubrey harrison oh absolutely i mean you know people used to used to really 
put it on Frank Bruno when he first started out, just saying, you know, he's fighting nobodies, and, but at least he was knocking these guys cold. And even when he moved up in class, he was still knocking these guys cold. You know, you just can't help but reflect and look back a little bit, but, you know, Aldi Harrison is supposedly, you know, the future of, of, of British heavyweight boxing. The words of advice to Danny Williams will work the body, then bring them up. Look for those uppercuts and hooks to the chin. Can he do it? Has he got the hand speed? Has he got the technique? I just wondered if Williams would have come in a stone lighter. He would have just had that extra bit of zap in his, in his punches. A little bit more option would have been going for his system. He could have worked a lot harder. Doesn't look fat though, Duke. I know he's 19 stone six, or at least he weighed that. Never actually saw if there was anything he was carrying in his trousers to you know, to, put, to make that heavier, but he doesn't look fat. Well, I'd like to pull that waistband down, that waistband down around his waist there and see what he's carrying now. I'm sure it's just all on his stomach. Again, not enough action in this ninth round. Harrison had a golden opportunity to enthuse the British public here, to really make a statement and to impress, and he just hasn't delivered so far. And Williams... In all honesty, looks as though he's beginning to run out of ideas, such as they were in the first place. Well, but, you know, he may be running out of ideas, but he's, he's, he's being the aggressor in this round. You know, got all the counter-punching, OK, but he's not counter-punching effectively. So at least Williams is going forward trying to make the fight. Well, so many of these punches of Harrison's are just being taken on the gloves and the arms. Clear scoring shots being landed by Harrison. I mean, that's a nothing punch. And then again, there's nothing at all from Williams. But there's nothing coming back from Williams at all. Well, this is a pretty dire round. And Williams standing pretty much stock still, trying to plant himself, trying to find the one big punch. But he's looking frustrated. And he's starting to go into his shell more and more the further the fight goes. Well, this is what we feared from Danny Williams. The reaction of the crowd absolutely tells its own story. I have to score that one to Harrison, Duke. Well, I've given it even because I don't think anybody did anything in that round. 